Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Social Conversations, where we get the privilege of sitting with change makers in the social space and finding out a little bit more about their journeys and what makes them do what they do. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Hara Chon from the Salle School of Design Communication. Dr. Chon began her professional career in New York as a fashion designer for Ralph Lauren before heading to Hong Kong to pursue her postgraduate education. Um, today, she lectures at La Salle and is also a visiting researcher in the Department of Science of Design at the Musashino Art University in Tokyo. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Chan. Um, I feel like though the word design is used so often in our regular conversation, right. um, we often only think of it as oh, fashion or like the way buildings are designed. Sure. Um, but I'm sure design is a lot more than that. Um, so what is design? Maybe that could help our viewers kind of. Sure. Um, actually, it's a really good question. Like, what is design indeed? I think I'm asked this quite often when I tell people that I am a designer, that I teach design, I also research in design. Right. Immediately they say, oh, is it graphic or interior, yeah. product, fashion, like which type of design is it? And I find this to be a deeply kind of a misguided and often an oversimplification of yeah. what design is because design is much more than, you know, what the outcomes are that we produce. Right but rather we have to look at what it is that design is capable of doing and how it reaches an audience and how it impacts lives. Yeah, so what kind of thought process goes behind, I don't know, the design process? What is that like? So I think with design, what's interesting about it is we have a very particular way of doing things. Mm -hmm. We have a particular way of how we frame, how we structure problems, how we understand holistically. Um, and I, we call this projective ability. We say okay. that as a designer, if I see a big problem in front of me, I'm going to be able to already foresee what the solution could be and what kind of impact that could have. Right. And so this type of framing, this type of understanding is what we do as designers, but we put it through a systematic process that is often iterative, yeah. but also allows us the creative freedom to continue to ideate. Cool. So since you work with, um, you used to work with Ralph Lauren back in yeah. New York, right? Um, did you see yourself teaching design here in, in Singapore? Like Never, actually. Um, I came to Singapore for the first time in 2000, 2001. Okay. Uh, I came with my family on holiday when I was a student, and I never imagined that I would ever end up in this part of the world. Right. So being, you know, like Korean, brought up in America, and never thought I would leave the States, working yeah. for a big fashion company in New York, I thought that was my career trajectory. Yeah. But at one point, I just sort of hit a wall where I decided there needs to be more than just this mundane process of designing clothing, you know, and I think <laughs> fashion is, is very um, instrumental in design. Yeah. Fashion is it our ability to use clothing as an interface to communicate. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's very much a socializing process. Yeah. But at the same time, aside from that interaction, like me as a designer, I felt there needs to be more to this. I need to know more about the system of design, not just the manufacturing, the sales, the marketing, the branding, but what else is involved? Who are the people involved? Yeah. And so that's why I moved to Hong Kong. Um, I did an MBA there, and then I ended up doing a PhD. And after that, I ended up here in Singapore. So with your time here at La Salle, um, I'm sure you've met a lot of interesting students sure. um, and seen a lot of interesting projects and proposals. So is there anything that has really stood out to you, and why would that have stood out to you? I think at the core of what design is, um, we need empathy. Yeah. And I think the empathy is not because we want to understand how people feel or how they understand, you know, how people are doing, but rather it's empathy and understanding the entire situation. Mm -hmm. uh, empathizing with people means that you need to also look into their needs and wants, yeah. behaviors. Um, and so a lot of the students, especially now, this year, uh, we've just started a new semester and they have really interesting projects that are looking at issues of sustainability, mm -hmm. um, looking at social issues. Yeah. There's a lot of social injustice even here in Singapore. Yeah. I think it's very much tucked away. You know, immediately for me as a foreigner, when I come here, it's a, a design city. It's so pretty, it's very nice, mm -hmm. very clean, it's sunny year round, you know, it's really kind of like being on holiday. But aside from that, you look at the small pockets of people who just face a lot of struggles, have mm -hmm. difficulties, whether it ranges from mental illness to um, the issue of um, just disabilities. And living with disabilities here in Singapore yeah. is oftentimes not supported. So we have students who are looking at a lot of these issues. They're really tackling them um, from a perspective of design. Mm -hmm. So they range from our BA programs. So I teach across four programs here in fashion, um, design communication, and then also in our MA design program. So has there been a certain project that really stood out to you? 
So one that really stood out is I have a student in our master's program at the moment. Um, she is an interior designer and she located a village in India. Okay. And this is um, a small village, a small nomadic tribe, and yeah. they've sort of been ostracized from different communities. Okay. And it's uh, very much a, a village run by women. Mm -hmm. So the women are essentially designers, they just don't realize that they are. So right. what they're doing is they're building their um, kind of infrastructures, they manage the farmland, um, they teach the children, the husbands are working in the farms. Yeah. And so she went there and she tried to extract all of the knowledge that she could gain from the women in the skills of the mm -hmm. know-how of how they knew how to mix all the mud to make the houses and the stoves right. and then she injected her knowledge into this process to teach them to actually follow more of a systematic process of designing oh, wow. so <laughs> it is it's kind of a project that's really grown so she's looking at the issue of um, empowering women through yeah. design but also learning from them and looking at what sorts of crafts and skills we can take from what this culture is already doing. And I think that's what's fascinating about design. For sure, because I think like empowering it truly is to, to help them, to let them help you, right? Sure. And that's, that's really what, what that process is about. Right. Um, so you talk about social change and using design as a tool for that. Sure. Um, how do you see that being done here in Singapore? Um, so here in Singapore, I've been very, very fortunate to have come across really interesting projects. Um, I've learned a lot about um, just different social enterprises through social space as mm -hmm. well. Um, and what I've been seeing is um, people are very curious. Yeah. I think people are saying that we live in a, in a place of privilege. I think we're in positions of being able to give back, but it's not simply having empathy anymore. It's mm -hmm. rather there needs to be almost a heart of compassion. Yeah. And I think it's only when you are confronted and you feel compelled to move into a, some sort of action that action takes place. And, yeah. and I think that's really exciting. So within those spaces, um, with design as a process, mm -hmm. I um, am very interested and I'm, I'm very optimistic about how different interdisciplinary um, projects can come forth, yeah. of how design can um, really aid a lot of these different um, endeavors that are already existing and in what sorts of ways the collaborations could produce something much more interesting. Cool, is there um, a spe specific like way that you see this happening uh, in a specific group of people that you could see it happening in? Um, I think first of all, we need more of a, an open think tank type incubator. Right. That's something that I've been kind of in the back of my mind wondering if we could push this, um, especially because the students are curious. Yeah. Um, myself as an academic, this is what I research, and I'm also very curious. But also I really want to know how the industry is capable of supporting this as well. Yeah. Do you, so do you think that in the next few years that would, that would be something that happens here? We've been Singapore? getting a lot of um, support from the industry. Um, I've been meeting a lot of different business owners who are saying, you know, I am interested in social enterprise. I'm interested in social issues. Mm -hmm. I need designers to feed into this system. And so cool. we as educators are trying to mold our programs, yeah. definitely taking sustainability as an agenda. And sustainability is not just in creating sustainable products or mm -hmm. looking at sustainable consumption, but rather yeah. looking at how do we sustain culture? Right. And I think Singapore has a problem with this. <laughs> because everything is new, 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 growing yeah. so quickly, and everything is very fast-paced. But we're losing touch with what is the heritage, and how do we transfer a lot of those traditions into our contemporary modern society. Yeah, for sure. I think Singapore is a really young country, and um, we probably have not done the best job trying to maintain what we already have, you know, and right. what little that we do have. So that's great. It's great to know that you guys are working towards preserving that in the future. Sure. Um, finally, as someone who isn't involved in design or someone who's, who's unsure what that, sure. that is or hasn't been trained in that, um, like many of our viewers, I'm sure, um, how could I kind of use the design process to better help society or what could I do about sure. that? Sure. So there is a thing called design thinking. Yeah. I don't know if you've come across this term. I think it's, I find it overutilized in many ways, sometimes right. misappropriated. Um, but where this comes from is in the past perhaps three decades, we've seen a huge paradigm shift in design. Okay. where we were saying design is not just within the realm of what professional designers do, mm -hmm. but rather we need to now look at what is it that designers know. Okay. Um, and a lot of this has to do with the fact that design isn't intuitive. A 
celebrated famous designer, someone like Rem Koolhaas or, yeah. you know, uh, Dieter Rams, like, they don't wake up one day and say, oh, I've been so blessed with all of this creativity and right. innovative thinking. But rather, there is a particular way that they process information, a mm -hmm. way that they are thinking. So this has been extracted and it's been formalized. It's really been um, analyzed to create different um, ways of systematizing a design right. process. And so design thinking is actually really, it's really great. It's something that um, allows a non-designer to now embark on a design process with a step-by-step -step methodology. Yeah, there's definitely, of course, the offer back at SMU. So sure. um, like all business students have to go through this design thinking right, class. Right. So that makes sense. That's very cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I think that's been really helpful. Um, it's really, really interesting to see where design is going to go in the future. And yeah, for any of our viewers out there who are interested in this, um, I'm sure there are plenty of things out there in the internet that you guys can look up on, especially <laughs> things like design thinking, which all of us can adopt. Um, so once again, I'm joined by Dr. Hara Chan. Uh, my name is Santosh, and this has been Social Conversations. If you guys have learned something new, feel free to tell us what it is down below in the comments. Um, share this with anyone you think could join the social space. And yeah, we'll see you guys next time.